What's going on YouTube? Um, in the last video I did the Docker Hello World and uh, this time I kind of wanted to go over the uh, the containers, like managing a container. What is a container? Where is it stored? What's Stuff like that. Basically we need to interact with these containers and um, I, I left that out of the last video so this will be a little bit shorter. So anyways, let's start. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to run the Docker Hello World again. We have Docker. Um, Run into uh, Echo Hello Docker. All right, so we've now we've just run a container, and uh, again you'll notice that when we do this, we don't really see anything happening. You know, there other than just what we told it to do. We told it to Echo Hello World, it did just that. But what about this container now? What actually happens? Well, there's a uh, there's a command that you can run to see a list of the uh, the containers that you have on your machine. So in this case, I just ran this command. So let's take a look and see what it is. If you run Docker ps, what that'll do is that'll show you a list of the containers that are currently running. Well, we don't have anything that's running right now, and the reason we don't have anything that's running is because when we ran the um, Docker run Ubuntu Echo Hello World, what it did was it ran the Echo, and once it was done, the container no longer is running. It, it, it runs what it needs to do, and then it stops as soon as it's done. So in this case, as soon as it echoed Hello Docker, the container stopped, which is really nice. It's really cool because then you're not taking up a lot of resources on your, uh, on your machine. That's one of the really powerful things about Docker. But if we run Docker PS, dash a the dash a is for all we can see here that there is actually a, uh, a container ID out there and if you look at it um, it is uh, the one that we just ran so it, it tells you a couple of different things that are uh, kinda nice to know about this particular container in this case it has a container ID and so that's generally or that's uh, that's generated every time you create a new um, container You'll have a randomly generated container ID. Um, you can see that when we ran it on the Ubuntu image, although we said it was the Ubuntu latest, that is the Ubuntu 14.04 um, image that it ran it on. The command was the echo hello docker, so you can see that, all right, we, we did run this hello docker on there. It tells us when the container was created. In this case, we just did it. Um, and then it also says the status. Well, we know that it exited because it echoed the hello docker and then as soon as it did that, it did exit. And then uh, you'll see that there's ports there, which in this case, we didn't have any exposed ports, so that's not going to pertain to us. And then it also creates this name for it. And the name is randomly generated as well, uh, Cranky Alien. Not sure, I'm not sure where that comes from, but that's generally how it goes. Now, here's the cool thing: if we Docker, uh, I'm going to do something kind of cool here. Um, if we Docker run Hello World again, so let's go ahead and run that again. We ran another one, and we can say Docker PS dash A again, and now you'll notice that there's a second one, and this time. It's, it does the same thing. It tells us all the same information, but you'll notice that when we ran it, it's in a separate container. So we ran this Hello Docker twice, and each time that we ran that, it ran in a separate container. That's one of the, the big driving points for Docker, at least in my opinion. Um, completely isolated environment. So we have this Ubuntu uh, 1404 image that we used, and in this particular case, both of these images are identical, but they're separate in the fact that we ran Hello Docker on one and we ran Hello Docker on another. So in this case, the uh, the container ID is completely separate, and we can still see all the information that we wanted to know about it. And, and this this can happen a few times. So I mean, I can run, I don't know, let's say that's five there. So if we run uh, Docker PS you know there now we have five we have five separate containers there all did the same thing we have five different names five different container IDs it, it's really really pretty cool so um, anyways that takes a look that, that gives you a kind of a look at um, the docker containers that you have uh, and we'll see more with this you'll notice that uh, this is kind of a, a most used um, command 
we run docker psha so we can see all the different uh, containers that we have and what happens is these kind of hang out here for a little while so you have two two options at this point because really at this point we don't need these containers anymore they've done what we needed to do we've seen them work we understand what's going on there so we don't need them anymore well you can get rid of them um and all, all, to get to get rid of them all you have to do is you do docker uh, rm and then in this case you can do it two ways you can do it by the container id so if i just go ahead and copy this uh... container id here and i remove it and then when i run docker PSH, hey, you'll notice that that one's gone. Um, that's kind of cumbersome though, because that's randomly generated. You basically, have to copy and paste. It's it's kind of ridiculous. So the other way you can do it um, is you can remove it by a name. So in this case, I can say Docker remove, and we'll just go ahead and we can get rid of this top one here. Um, Docker remove focused uh, Fenman. And then when I run that, you'll see that it, it spits out the name again. But if we uh, if we run this to see if it's still there, we can see that it's not there. Um, in, in this case, I'm going to run a little shortcut, which is kind of nice. Uh, I don't need any of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Docker, um, remove, and then I'm going to throw it a variable. And in this case, what I'm going to run is uh, Docker PS-A-Q for uh, quiet. Now what's going to happen is, when I run this, it's going to go through all the images that we have, and it will remove every one of them. Or all, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not not the images, it'll remove all the containers. So if I go ahead and hit enter, you notice there that it shows the three containers that we had left, which are these three here, and it removed them. So if I run docker ps-a again, we don't have anything. No longer do we have any images that are that are laying around. So here's another cool thing that we can do. So if we do uh, docker run ubuntu um, echo hello docker. Uh, one of the other things that we can do is we can actually specify a name for this. And the way to do that is this dash dash name flag. And I'm just going to say hello docker will be the name. If we run it. Hello Docker. Now if we run this Docker PS-A here again, you'll notice that again it gives us what we want, but this time instead of just a randomly generated name, we actually have the name that we um, that we specified up here in the command, which is really nice because eventually when you have your your environment set up, then you can name the different pieces of uh, your, your environment, your containers. You can name all your containers, whatever you need to, and then you can refer to them by their container name rather than container ID. It's a much nicer way to do things, and uh, again, you'll see more of this as we go along, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to show you this real quick. Um, so, I think this will conclude this video. Uh, I don't really want to take it too far. Um, there's some other things that we can show you with the uh, the containers, but uh, I think we'll leave that for a little later when we start getting into some of the more uh, beefy things that we can do with uh, Docker. So, all right, uh, keep a lookout because I will be posting up some more videos um, probably within the next week or so, and we can start diving into a couple more of the the features that Docker offers. All right, thanks a lot.